we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I don't know why I whispered that. Why did I whisper that? You know what, Jared? I'm 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 a little I'm a little sad. This is this is the last regular season week. Don't be sad. Of of college football. But we got a lot of great games though. We do have a lot of great games. This is actually How are you doing? One of the best weekends of the year uh for for college football. Um it, Yeah, it, absolutely. It is do. it is the best week of the year. What are you talking about, Jared? I well I mean from a national perspective. Obviously, from a uh, Ohio State perspective, it is the best weekend of the year. But from a national perspective, it's one of the best weekends of the year. And well, Kyle, we're starting things off with some Friday games. Yeah, there's there's quite a few Thursday and Friday games here. It's surprising. And, and it's not just like, oh, Maction, which, yes, Maction is going on as we speak right now, Jared. Uh <laughs> But yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of good games this, uh, this week here. And we're, we're going to start off on um, two games this Friday here. Uh, first one you have here, Jared is Texas and Texas tech. Yeah. Uh, Texas, Texas is a 13 and a half point favorite in this game. They are, um, I was looking at. Texas Tech's record against the spread, as I as I have a tendency to do. And uh-huh. I noticed something. Um, the Tell two me. the two best teams that they've played this year, uh, I would say by by a lot. They they somehow dodged Oklahoma this year. So the best two teams they played this year, previous to Texas, uh, Oregon and Kansas. Um. And they played those games incredibly close. Like uh, they, again, Oregon's a team that's been blowing teams out all year. They only lost by eight. They lost by one score to Kansas. Uh, so with Texas coming in and Texas maybe being a bit focused on the championship game next weekend, uh, I see I see Texas Tech playing this one close. I do think Texas still wins. But with 13 and a half points, I'm going to take, I'm going to say Texas tech covers. I think this is, I think this is like a six to eight point game. Give me the red raver rivers, the red Raiders to cover in this one, Jared. Yeah, did you, I agree. Did you I, combine Raider and Ryder? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take Texas tech to cover in this one here. Austin says Texas tech uh, pulling the upset calling it now it's my chaos pick one i don't hate that two i think there are two better options uh zach who's our our guest picker this week here he says give me tt to take the exhausted longhorns as quinn ewers and gang wins close in a typical big 12 game that brings sadness to our hearts this conference is garbage yeah, I think right. I, I that I, I think I think we're on the same page, Zach. I think we're on the same page. All right. Also, Friday night, Jared, Oregon State in Oregon. What is this doing on Friday night? Fox. Fox paid them to do it. That's that's why. What do you do it? Do it, Fox. All right. Either they're way, making money. Oregon. This is Kyle the Ducks. Kyle. Th- this is how yes, the Big yes. Ten's rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Civil War, by two, by by. By, by a pair of teams in a state that was not involved in the Civil War. Kyle, the, the, the joke wasn't good enough for you to leave all that silence there and <laughs> highlight how bad that joke was. You, you really needed to keep talking. Oregon is a 13 and a half point favorite in this game. And honestly, Jared, as much as much as Oregon has looked good this year, and and they have, or Oregon State's defense is actually pretty legit. Um, yeah. Especially watching, especially watching last week and how they shut out Washington in the second half. They did. They did pretty much what they needed to to try to win that game. It just just wasn't enough. It al- almost was enough. Uh, I got. I got. I got the Beavers to to cover in this game. I think I think 
Oregon State's going to keep this close. Oregon Oregon will still end up winning, but ooh, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Beavers to cover. Yeah, um, I think I think Oregon State. I think the Beavers have a very very strong um, opportunity to pull the upset here. Like I, I think they're well poised to win this game. Uh, which would be the chaos injection that we need for this weekend. Austin, is this my chaos pick? No, it's not. But um, this is my second favorite chaos pick of the weekend. Um, I, I do think Oregon wins. But again, I think Oregon State has a real opportunity to actually win this game. So if you're going to give me a 13 and a half point budget. Budget? Buffer. 13 and a half point buffer. Uh, I'm going to take it. Absolutely. So, yeah, g give me the Beavers to at least cover. At least cover. And Zach says here, it's the Civil War, and I would love to see some chaos, but give me Bo friggin' Nicks <laughs> and the fucking cover. <laughs> Why? Did, did you just not want to say it twice? <laughs> did you just not want to say it twice, Zach? All right, we're moving on to Saturday. Saturday noon, we have Kentucky and Louisville. Uh, Louisville is a six and a half point favorite. That, that's that's a great line. That's a great line because that's pretty much the number that they've won the past two weeks. They beat Miami by seven. They beat Virginia by seven. So theoretically, if they win by seven here, they cover. But I'm 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 actually going to take Kentucky to to cover here. I th I think I think Louisville is playing with fire here, and they I think I think this is going to be a really close one. So I'll take the I'll take Kentucky to cover. When you're a program, when you're a school, when you're a team like Louisville, and you're not used to being a front runner it's sometimes very hard to be a front runner. You're not used to playing with that, with that pressure, with those expectations. So one can Louisville play with those expectations with that pressure. Um, two uh, in, in looking at the uh, against the spread record, uh, Kentucky has only covered once since getting whomped by Georgia on October 7th. They haven't covered a game. Well, they have co they've covered one game since October. Well, not even since October 7th. So since October 1st, I assume, because they certainly didn't cover against Georgia. Um, Kentucky has been playing terrible against the line the last two thirds of the season. Uh, the the with the number under seven points, it gives me a fair amount of cover to go ahead and pick Louisville. If it was seven and a half, I'd feel a little, but at six and a half, I'll take Louisville. All right. Zach says here, I feel to see why Kentucky is even entertained here, but Louisville has a great season. They've managed is definitely doable for some team chaos, but give me Louisville. I mean, I was just trying, I, I was trying to make sure we covered all the most relevant teams in the <clears throat> games I picked. Um, the only like, like of our, because Kyle, we had like nine teams in either S or A tier when we did Collegiate Chaos. All of those teams, mm -hmm. except Georgia, are represented in our sloop picks. That's that's how I picked these games. All right. Georgia just missed. Georgia just hit the cutting room floor because they're playing Georgia Tech, and that's like a twenty-plus point spread. So I just that was the one that didn't get picked. All right, next game here is the Iron Bowl. Uh, Alabama is a 14 and a half point favorite. I'm I'm actually surprised. I'm surprised this is not more like not 18, 19 and a half, something like that. I'm especially what we've seen from Auburn last weekend. I mean, I mean, who who knows? I mean, Typically, typically with these rivalry games, you th you throw everything out the window, and you you see what happens here. But but God, it it is so hard to look at last weekend and just how not just lose, but just badly 
to New Mexico State. Like, yeah, g- give me Alabama to cover. Kyle, were you peeking at my notes? No. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I like that. I, l- I leave my notes here. Um, my my though I you know sometimes I have a bunch of stuff. This against the spread. That against the spread. You know, against the spread at home. Against the spread. This or that. For this, my notes simply says, kind of floored, this number is under 20. Give me Bama. That's literally all I wrote. <laughs> nice. All right, Zach says here, Bama managed to peak. Find a quarterback in their defense is typical saving shape. Auburn is, well, Auburn. If they were Ole Miss, I'd say close knit slobber knocker, <laughs> but it's not. It's Bama for a big cover and a win because Auburn sucks. Totally fair. And for what it's worth, I think their quarterback looks better largely because their young offensive tackles are playing better. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I I think it's, I think it's the quarterback getting help. I think it's Milrow getting help more than it actually is Milrow playing better for what it's worth. I agree. Well, there you go. Zach agrees. All right, uh, next next game here. Apple Washington Cup. St- the Apple Cup. Washington State and Washington. Washington is a 16 and a half point favorite. Now, I'm just going to read you some um, um, the victories that Washington had recently and their margin of victory here. Last weekend, last weekend against, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, last week against Oregon State, two points. Utah, seven points. USC, 10 points. Stanford, nine points. Uh, Arizona State, who's not that good. That is a uh, fact. Eight, point, eight points. And you're giving 16 and a half to Washington State, who's, yeah, they're five and six, but they're not Arizona State bad. I'll take the Cougars. I'll take the Cougars to cover. Yeah. Uh, Washington hasn't covered a double digit spread. And I think they've had three opportunities. Uh, they haven't covered a double digit spread since beating Cal on nine twenty three. Uh, they've been playing most of their games very closely. Uh, as Kyle just pointed out, um, the only time they've beaten any team, regardless of the spread, the only times they've beaten any teams since California. So you know, since playing Arizona on September 30th, they beat USC by 10 points. That's their only double digit win. In the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. It's their only double digit win in the last seven games. Yeah, Washington State's not good, but they're also not bad. So give me the Cougars, 16 and a half. Way too expensive. Zach says here, Washington hasn't been the same since Oregon as has had a battle it out to survive lately. Luckily, they play in-state rival Washington State. Penix stands erect as always and gives me a woof woof Huskies. Yeah, it was the woof woof that got me, not the. (laughs) So he's got the Huskies to cover then. He's got the Huskies to cover. All right. Uh, And our last game here. um, I don't know. Does this even have a have a fancy name for it? Florida State in Florida. Is there a fancy name for it? Uh, Like the Apple Bowl, the Iron Bowl, the game. I don't know the answer to that question and our resident Florida experts. Well, Florida Buck's in here. Florida Buck? The Sunshine Showdown. Did you just make that up? Nope, that's actually it. That's terrible. That's terrible. I hate that. For the record, I hate that. That's... That's some Iowa, Iowa State trophy bullshit right there. Go Buckeyes. He is right. Michigan indeed. 
Ugh. All right, the Sunshine Showdown. Oh, God. Connor did the same thing. <laughs> All right. Kyle, I the guess. Sunshine, the Sunshine Showdown. Yay. How is the Apple Cup better? Because it is. Because <laughs> anyway. it is. Bigger rivalry than Ohio State, Michigan. Sure thing, buddy. I know you're kidding. Um, all right. Florida State, Florida, Kyle. Uh, Florida State's favored by six and a half points. Who do you got? got? Oh, you're, uh, am I going? I'll um, let you go first this time. I think Florida wins this game. Straight up. This is my chaos pick. I think Florida wins this football game. Um, six, six and a half points. Sure. I'll take that as a buffer. It, this, this is the, it's not the sunshine uh, showdown. It's the backup quarterback showdown. That it is. Uh, and one team has a much sharper drop off than the other. And that, that, that team is Florida do. state. And that's why, that's why I got Florida to, to cover this game. Yeah, I, they have they have a legit shot in upsetting Florida or Florida State. Yes, I, I just have but a hard at time. Least, at, at least Florida Florida State actually has a lot more talent around them than Florida does this year. But still, mm. yeah, I, I'll still take Florida to cover though. Yeah, uh, what I'm having larger picture than just this game. Is Florida State is Florida State with their backup quarterback capable of beating Florida and Louisville in back to back weeks? I I mean that's not a rhetorical question, Kyle. Do you think that they? No, <laughs> I thought you were just just setting the tone here and I just... mean I was but also go ahead and answer <laughs> uh no no not 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 with that not without their not without their quarterback no yeah uh Jordan Travis it felt like was carrying this team around on his back for a while and Florida's not very good but they're better than the five and six record that they, that, that they are. They've had a very tough schedule this year. They're better than five and six. Um, not a lot better than five and six, mind you, but they are better than five and six. And Louisville, I don't think is nearly as good as their nine and one record suggests, but they're not that far off either. Uh, and I just have a hard time seeing Florida state winning both of these games. Um, so give me a six and a half point buffer to, to pick Florida. I'm going to take it. Yep. Same here. Zach says Florida State without Travis isn't good. This game could come down to mistakes in this rivalry, which I, I'm totally, totally expecting a lot of mistakes in this in this game here. Uh, give me Florida on the cover. In the season? Yeah, there's going to be some mistakes. Give me Florida on the cover, but Jameis Winston's alma mater for the win. What he says, FSU by double digits. Maybe. I mean, I'm not going to say no. I mean, yeah, he he, he came in and uh, his the backup there, um, Rotomaker. Against yeah, he, he, he looked against he, he looked fine, but but. Yes. Against a sub five hundred FCS school, a su a bad FCS team, not a good FCS team, FCS team, not a mid FCS team, a bad FCS team, who scored, who was winning that game thirteen to nothing, and then took out Jordan Travis for <laughs> conservatively a season. Um. I don't know, man. It's this. This feels like a def uh, yeah. Okay, as as Zach says in the chat, 
even if I don't agree that it's going to be 13 to nine, it, this is another pick the under game for sure. Now, what, what is the under of, of this one? Is it low? What's this D and a half? Uh, I mean, it's under. It's somewhat under. I'm low. The under. It's somewhat low, uh, under, but I'm, I'm, still I'm still taking, taking the, under. the under. Yeah. Yep. All right. Looking at some of these other games here, Jared, what are what are some other games that potentially could see could see an upset here? Um, I mean, my could my, the, could my the, official could, the bowl, could there be an upset in the egg bowl here? Sure. I mean, I, I think Ole Miss has looked incredibly sketchy against bad teams this year, um, which they're playing a very bad team. But again, Ole Miss has just not shown up to a lot of bad teams this year. About, Georgia about... overlooks Georgia Tech. I don't see it happening, Zach. I don't see that happening. How about the game in Lincoln, Nebraska? A lot, lot to play for for Nebraska here. You are one game away from a bull game here. And Iowa... Like what, what what does this game mean to Iowa? Nothing. This game means nothing to Iowa here. They they're already a lock into the I mean, it is a rivalry. It both despite Nebraska not being in the in the Big Ten all that long, both of these fan bases have for for a new rivalry, both of the fan bases have fully embraced it. Um so again, it's a new rivalry, but it's it's already pretty intense. Um I, I don't expect Iowa to like go full spring game on it just because they're locked into the Big Ten championship it's, game. The spread is the spread is the line is two and a half for the Cornhuskers. Okay, but Kyle, we all want to know what the over under is. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, shoot, let me go back there. It is. How is this so much lower? 26 and a half <laughs> I, there's no way i'm betting that 13 oh, points man. per team there's no chance in hell i'm i'm betting under on that That's that just... was lower that was lower than the illinois game iowa illinois game which i thought was going to be really low iowa set a record this year for one of their games being the lowest over under in uh, ever i don't know i thought it was the uh rutgers game i i thought was that was 27 and a half that's the one 27 and a half so this and was, it was still under and it was and it was under still because it was a 22 to nothing game actually all of their games um was the illinois game also hold on I, I'm curious now. Yes, every game, as far as I'm going back to um, Minnesota was as well. I'm sure Wisconsin was as well. I, I'm, I'm dedicated to looking into this now, Jared. <laughs> oh, my God. Every game, I'm going back so far in Iowa here. Every game has been an under. Where Where's the first one? Okay. Last time that they hit the over, Michigan State. was against was against Michigan. They've State. only hit the over twice this year: once against Western <laughs> Michigan, once against Michigan wow. State. So they Holy only hit the crap. over when playing Michigan teams. Just saying. And by the way, wow. like, yeah, they haven't even necessarily been coming close. Missed the Illinois That's spread impressive. by five and a half. Missed the Rutgers game by five and a half. Missed the Northwestern game by 14 and a half. Minnesota game by eight and a half. Um, and yeah, the Rutgers game was yeah. only 27 and a half points. Do you, uh, did you guys hear they switched our first game next year? I, I knew a, I knew a change was coming. I didn't see what it was yet is that what's happening so it's not akron 
do or did we sign up for a because because our our schedule as it stood at the beginning of tuesday it, oh it's akron instead of southern miss oh it's now akron okay that's not the news i wanted our schedule is yeah. dog shit next year it is all right, our, our, our out of conference are... schedule is dog shit next year we have a pretty tough right. big 10 Going back to some of the other ones up, Texas Tech we mentioned could be an upset over Texas. That could be the the big chaos in this game here. Um, some other unranked teams versus ranked teams that could pull out an upset here. Um, mentioned Washington State, Washington could could be a lot closer. I think Iowa State and Kansas State, Kansas State's nineteenth. I think can be a Interesting game. I'm not even going to count that one. Uh, UNC and NC State. NC State is ranked now. But. Um, um, I'm sticking with Florida, Florida State. Um, I, I just think, I mean, it's the number five team in the country. That's that's a that's a prized pig as far as picking a chaos pick. Mm hmm. And like you, you make a good point that Nebraska is technically favored against against Iowa. So I mean that does make a good logic that makes good logical sense to to take that pick. And I, I applaud you for taking it. But I'm going big fish here. I'm going to call the number five team. Yeah, I think I think I'll, I think I'll stick with uh, Nebraska here. Nebraska, they, I think they're going to pull all all the stunts I mentioned. Like I mentioned before, this is this is their game to be able to get one more one more game for the year. This is this is their this is their big game here. To go and to it's, a, it's a young team with a lot of Nebraska is a really young team with a brand new coaching staff. Uh, they have a lot of momentum going as far as like because they were very bad at the beginning of the year. They're playing much better now. Um, I think it would be huge for them to get two weeks of practice. I think that's would be huge for them. So they are, you know, even if the bowl game is going to be pretty unspectacular, getting those two weeks of practice will be huge for that program. All right, Kyle. Um, do you have anything else? Should we end this show? I think, I think that's it. I think, um, yeah, the whole opening game has changed for Ohio State there. So, ugh, yeah, it's I was not really, looking good for for, for their, really for their um, out of conference. Akron, Western Michigan, and Marshall. I was really hoping that if they were going to change something, that they were going to do some sort of kickoff classic thing and we were going to drop Southern Miss and add, you know, a big game played in you know, Dallas Ooh. or something for some sort well, of, I mean, to, to be, to be, to be fair though, like some, some big it, neutral you're, site. You're, you're adding, you're adding Oregon. You're adding Oregon to the schedule. I understand. Mm -hmm. But you also removed Penn state from the schedule. Pet, no, they play Penn state next year. Ohio state does not play Penn state next year. Do they? I thought they didn't. I've said it multiple times this year that Ohio State and Penn State weren't playing. They do, Jerry. Did that change too? I'm so confused. They keep they quit changing the schedule, Ohio State or Big Ten or whoever. I got nothing else, Jared. I got nothing else. <laughs> uh, go crew again. Fair. Fair <laughs> and valid, and I support it. All right. Uh, once again, tonight's ending music brought to you by the Dead Shembecklers. Bed the Dead Shembecklers are a uh, parody punk band from the Columbus area, make a bunch of anti-Michigan songs. So uh, with all that being said, Kyle, I'd like to uh, ask everyone to drink local beer, listen 
to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again these are the dead champ Becklers. Thank you.